Universal Audio released Luna 2.0 and Luna Pro 2.0. And while I had no intentions of upgrading to Luna Pro, there's some new things that make it very compelling. I discovered that Luna Pro 2.0 includes hardware inserts, and of course they included dozens of UAD plugins in addition to that. Don't get me wrong, the new features and the plugins and all the cool things that they've added, they're really, really good. But the one that drew my attention by far is the hardware insert. All right, so the Luna Pro bundle includes a license for the hardware plugin and so what this means, as we've discussed earlier, is that it allows you to incorporate your outboard gear into your Luna workflow, just like you would with any other plugin, right? Whether it's UA or a third party. And so you're able to do this though, while maintaining your session in sync. So this actually compensates for latency. And for those of you who may not know what latency is, it's basically the round trip that your audio has to take when it leaves your computer, goes into your interface, your audio interface, and it leaves your audio interface to come back into your computer. That round trip there creates uh, a small little delay, which is referred to as latency. So this hardware insert plugin compensates for that round trip. All right, so one big thing I wanna make sure you all are aware of, which they've noted here, in order to use the hardware insert, you must have an audio interface that provides assignable outputs. UA has provided a list of interfaces that cannot take advantage of hardware inserts. And so it would be the Apollo Solo, Volt 1, Volt 176, Volt 2, and the Volt 276. These are all interfaces that cannot be used for hardware inserts. And I'm going to assume that the same is also true about third-party interfaces that do not provide assignable outputs. All right, let's talk about how this actually works. And so the hardware insert plugin routes audio from your track through its output and then to your external gear and returns the process audio through its input. Make sure that you connect the assigned output from your audio interface to the input of your outboard gear. And so to really put it in simple terms, the plugin's output is assigned to a physical output on your audio interface. I'm gonna repeat that again. The output of the hardware insert that is assigned to a physical output on your audio interface. Connect this output to the input of your external hardware. And so this is also referred to as a send, and there's a control there that allows you to set the output level that you're gonna send to your hardware. And so the plugin input is going to be assigned to a physical input on your audio interface. You connect this assigned input on your audio interface to the output of your outboard gear. This is also known as a return. This is gonna be very important, especially for those of you who are doing more of a hybrid setup, which is what I do. Sometimes you might wanna put a plug-in before or after, uh, and especially if you're putting a plug-in after your hardware insert, you wanna make sure that your gain staging is is good. This can really affect the results of your mix depending on how you have all that gain state. So um, it's a good thing that they have that control there. I talked about latency earlier. There's a calc button and what that button does, it calculates the latency incurred by the round trip through your interface and external hardware. When you press that button, basically it just calculates it and keeps everything locked in sync. The way that this actually works, when you hit the calc button, the plugin sends an audio signal and automatically calculates the hardware latency. And there's also a mix knob as well. So if you're trying to blend the process signal from your hardware and the dry signal, you can use that knob if, if needed. So of course, hardware inserts require very specific connections and configurations. So make sure that in your matrix IO uh, for console that you have everything routed correctly. And so there's more instructions on uh, UAD's website. You know, you can check into that if you're not sure 
on how to set that up properly. But these are like the basic steps and I think um, they're pretty easy to follow. We're gonna get right back to the video, but I wanted to give a quick shout out to those of you who have recently joined the channel. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for those of you who have been sharing the videos. And if you've made it this far into the video, please consider clicking on the like button. We'll get right back to the video. Many dolls already include the capability of using outboard hardware. And it's great to see that UAD decided to go ahead and make that available. So let's go ahead and check out the hardware insert feature. I'm gonna go ahead and set some things up. All right, as you can see here, for this music stem, I have the Vision channel strip from API. It's actually off. When it is activated, you'll see it light up orange, but we're gonna have it turned off. So it'll gray out. Next, we're gonna click on the insert slot. The plugin browser will expand. Over here is where you would select the hardware insert. I'm gonna click on it. And as you can see here, here's where we would select our outputs. I'm gonna be selecting outputs three and four from my Apollo rack. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the input. We wanna go ahead and select three and four as well. We should be connected to my outboard EQ. Let's test it out. All right, so let's test and see if we got it to work. You'll see the meters on the Apollo. You'll see them light up. Now I'm going to deactivate it. When it's powered off, now it's powered on. Powered off. All right, so the test is good. We got it to work. I've gone ahead and added more hardware inserts. All right, so let's talk about how I have this set up. I'm certain that I'll end up reconfiguring this in the near future, but the drums are running through these two modules. These are from LTL, louder than liftoff. And out of here, they're going into the Blackline Audio Revolution EXP that I have connected via ADAT. So uh, that's on ADAT channel one and two, these two here. And then keys are running through these two modules, these two Trident equalizers, and that will be ADAT three and four. Again, that's running through the Blackline Audio Revolution EXP. I have synth bass running through this Aphex preamp, and I like the color that it's adding. The Aphex is connected to ADAT five and six. So again, drums are running through ADAT one and two. I have keys running through ADAT three and four. Synth bass is running through ADAT five and six. And then I have the music stem, which contains the guitars running through this drummer. The drummer here is helping out with some presence and clearing up some of the muddiness. It's running through channels three and four on the Apollo rack. All right, so I'm gonna save this hardware insert for channels three and four on my Apollo. I'm gonna save that as a preset, and that way I can easily recall it the next time. And so the next time I wanna run through the drama EQ, I can easily just click on that and bam, it's right up there just like I would for any other plugin that I wanna access. I'm gonna go ahead and right click here and hit presets. And now that I've done that, I can tell it to save. I'm gonna give it a name. I'm gonna call it Drama MQ2. Then hit save as, bam. 
And so we're going to test and see if it actually worked. Let's remove. All right, so it's been removed. I come over here. Bam. I don't have to redo all this process of putting in the actual input or the output and input channels. It's all just there because I saved it as a preset. So that is very efficient. I like that. I really do like that. So I've been a long time Pro Tools user. And so Luna has just made it to where I'm just being drawn. I've been attracted more and more by all of these new features they've incorporated. I think this is fantastic. We've only touched on the hardware insert. There's many other features that make this DAW attractive. They make it um, very user friendly in my humble opinion. Now, this by no means, this video is not intended to make anyone feel that you have to go out there and get outboard gear. Um, I work inside the box as well. I have more of a hybrid situation but a lot of the mixing I do uh, has been in the box. But every now and again, there are certain projects that uh, I feel benefit from using some outboard gear. So if you have pieces of outboard gear that you would like to use and you happen to have an interface that also allows you to utilize the assignable inputs and outputs, then this might be something you might wanna try. And of course, I'm just showing you how I did it. Uh, there's instructions as far as routing, how you can get all that stuff set up on Universal Audio's website. So again, my intention here is just to show you this really cool feature and how some of you may be able to utilize this in your setup. So I hope this has been informative and helpful. I appreciate you clicking the like button on this video. And if you share it, great, leave me a comment. I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. And so until then, stay safe.